In the remote hills of southwest China, these coffins clinging perilously to cliffs contain the key to the mysterious tribe known as the Bo people, annihilated in a bloody massacre 400 years ago. Who were the Bo? Why did they hang their dead on cliffs? And how did they do it? Is it because, as legend tells us, they could fly? Now a scientific journey is underway to solve an archaeological mystery, to separate fact from legend, and to uncover the secrets, and perhaps the very face of the Bo people. On the other side of this remote ravine, perched hundreds of feet above the riverbed, is one of the greatest mysteries in all of China. The hanging coffins of the Bo people. The Bo tribe have become legendary for their phenomenal habit of burying their dead in these impossible vertical cemeteries. When I first visited, I was strictly coming in as an explorer with a sense of trying to discover something that perhaps you know, the rest of the world don't know. We realized that, hey, here's something that is unique and mysterious. As someone from the 21st century, to even imagine remotely that hundreds of years ago, a thousand years ago, these people here were able to pretty much freehand climb these cliffs, putting a huge weight on the cliff face. It's just unthinkable. The Bo were wiped out in the massacre by the Ming Dynasty in the 16th century. They left no written records, and the only remaining clues to this extraordinary tribe are their precarious hanging coffins. How man has sent an expedition team to gather new evidence about the hanging coffins and the Bo people, their customs and traditions. Did any of the Bo survive the massacre? Do the Bo have living descendants today? The focus of the expedition is here, some 1,500 miles from the major city of Beijing, in northern Yunnan and southern Sichuan, the heart of what was once Bo country. Archaeological investigators from the China Research and Exploration Society along with our film crew, are first heading for one of the most spectacular coffin locations ever found, Doushia Guan. The cliff at Doushia Guan is over 700 feet tall, and wedged in a crack right in the middle is a cluster of wooden coffins. No one has ever managed to reach these coffins. The expedition team is eager to climb the cliff and see what clues lie inside. Liu Hong is the explorer whose job it is to get everyone up to the coffins. And Dr. Ji Xueping is head of the expedition. It's very difficult to study these coffin sites. You need huge amounts of funding, and you have to take a lot of safety precautions. So over the years, there hasn't been a great deal of research on the coffins. Nice rhythm, nice rhythm. 
Before Ji Xueping can even think about getting to the coffins, he must first send Liu Hong and Roger Graham, the safety officer, to check out the route. Even crossing the river is a challenge. Okay, it looks peaceful enough right now, but flash floods are frequent in these remote mountains of Yunnan. Okay, we're beached. Oh, I can see, uh, I can see one of the coffins there. So I'm going to go up here and then cut across there. It doesn't look too bad from here, but... Uh, shall we have a look? The reason I joined the expedition was to find out who put this hanging coffin up there, what is inside, who did it belong to. These questions are all part of the mystery and greatly intrigue me. Come here for a sec. How are you doing? This way is not so steep. Let's have a look. Yeah. But even for experienced climbers with modern equipment, this is a hazardous route, let alone for Ji Xueping and the other researchers. They're not going to get up here. <laughs> no way. Uh, Roger to Harry. It's, it's seriously loose, and it's going to be lethal if I go much further. Copy. If you don't have the equipment with you, then don't, uh, don't attempt to climb it. I think we turn around because I can go, but I'm, if I fall because of a loose rock, yeah, yeah. it's going to be death. But somehow the boat people managed to scale these heights with no climbing equipment and carrying a 500-pound coffin. The difficulty in getting a, a coffin up there seems insurmountable given the, the terrain. It's very crumbly, it's very steep, it's very high. I don't know how they did it um, safely. I mean, they may have lose, lost a few people along the way. Uh, I don't know whether it mattered back then, but uh, I would say that it would have been extremely, extremely difficult and dangerous. The Bo people were able to achieve this amazing feat during the Ming Dynasty. Today, our expedition team failed. To find success, they must head for a new coffin site, deeper into the mountains. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the trip. How on earth did the bow manage to hang their coffins 300 feet up the side of a sheer cliff over a thousand years ago? I'm always very inquisitive. And of course, the first question asked was, how, how did they do it? You know, how, how can they put up these hundreds of pounds coffins? Stylistically, there are a number of different ones. But still, the lower part is stuck up from one piece of wood, one, one piece of timber, which means that it, it will be very heavy. No one knows exactly how the bow managed to heave this great weight halfway up a sheer cliff. Some say they waited until the rivers were so high they could just float up. For others, the only solution is that the bow people could fly.
A thousand years ago, all that was available to the bow was an axe, hammer and chisel, wood, rope, and manpower. Somehow, with these simple tools, they managed this extraordinary task. What is clear is this, the bow afforded great honor and care to the handling of their dead. Our ancestors have a saying, treat the dead as if they are still alive. They believe the dead person has simply moved to a new place and that they will continue their daily life once they reach the other side, wearing clothes, eating and drinking. So you have to provide them with their day-to-day -day items in the coffin. These burial items show that the bow were very advanced in agriculture. They knew how to produce silk and very fine linen by cultivating silkworms. These costumes are directly modeled from the clothes found on bow corpses. The coffin is authentic as well. The skills to make these items can be readily found in rural China today. But what no one has accomplished in over 400 years is to get a 500-pound coffin up to the top of a cliff. I think the method of hanging varies from region to region. For instance, in Matangbar, there are holes found at the bottom, and from the pattern, you can tell they probably have created the Zhang Dao, which is some narrow footway perched on pegs winding up the cliff. Then they just carry the coffin up from the bottom. Another method mentioned in the archives was to send someone up there first, then attach ropes to the coffin and pull it up. team from Chang'an village, testing one theory of how the coffins may have been hanged, used only the materials thought to be available to the bow. It took 12 people three days to recreate this theory, but for the bow, this epic funeral ceremony would have been a routine event.
there are still many coffins dotting the landscape of southwest China. They could reveal many clues about the mysterious life and death of the bow. Hao Men's team is driving further into the remote northern corner of Yunnan. The roads get rougher. The convoy winds slowly through the rough terrain, proceeding at a walking pace. Having failed to reach the coffins at Doxia Guan, the team is hoping for greater success in the valley of Long Ma. Their search may yield more clues to this mysterious and uncharted region. This is the end of the road. The entire team must now walk the last few miles to this new and unexplored coffin site. There have been rumors about the existence of hang coffins at Longma for quite a long time. But because of the remoteness of the location and the transport problems, no one from outside has ever been there before. We don't know what we're going to find. Of course, it's very exciting to be the first ones there, with a chance to solve some mysteries, a chance to reveal this mysterious phenomenon to the world. Liu Hong has already visited the site to organize the building of some scaffolding. I was very excited because the hanging coffins were so high up on the mountain cliff. We could only see them from afar. They were very, very mysterious. Although it's a long march to Long Ma, once they get there, reaching the coffins should be a whole lot easier than Dou Sha Guan. After a two-hour walk, the team finally reaches Long Ma, home to a few dozen villagers, and site of an unexplored burial ground of the Bo people. Scattered along the length of the cliff, there are seven caves, which could contain coffins and skeletons of the bow. Now it is just a matter of time. The scaffolding is already well under construction, built from bamboo in the same traditional style used in China for several centuries. But even when it's complete, the scaffolding will only reach some of the caves on the Longma cliff. Xi Xueping has decided to send climbers to some of the more inaccessible caves. Even with modern climbing equipment, getting into these caves is difficult and dangerous. I will make a try. 
code, come back down and we'll just run the new line across her. For Liu Hong, hanging down has proved impossible. The only chance of getting into the caves is to haul himself up. Terry, you see anything in the cave? It's fairly deep, so I'm not too sure what it's in there. I'll turn my headlamp on and have a look. There's a piece of wood here that seems to be, uh, it looks like it's put in as a wedge, but also maybe where the coffin was sitting on. Can you take a small piece of wood for us? Yes. The way it's been chiseled, it fits in the rock like a jigsaw puzzle. We found wooden and stone supports, but no coffins. Whether they never got round to installing the coffins in the first place, or whether they were damaged due to vandalism, we don't know. But one thing is for sure, those caves have signs of human activities. At one time, within living memory, there were over 12 coffins sticking out here at Long Ma. For the archaeologists, their hopes of solving the mystery are now pinned on the one remaining coffin in the highest of the caves. I think the most fascinating question is not how they do it, but why they do it. My suspicion is that it has to be something very spiritual. As Chinese, we are not used to seeing coffins exposed. We consider something very important and sacred. And here, these coffins are all open to the elements. The vast majority of the Chinese population are Han people, originally from the north of the country, but there are still over 50 minority ethnic groups in China, with 24 concentrated in the mountains of Yunnan. Throughout China, death, the funeral ceremony, and the worship of ancestors are all of great significance. Different tribes have different ways of showing it. The ideal place for a hand tomb is in the ground, on the side of a hill, overlooking the living. This combination is thought to bring good fortune to the descendants. What is surprising about the hanging coffins is that it is the complete opposite. Perched up in the air, ungrounded, and separated from the living family. This reveals a lot about the Bo's worldview, according to Guo Jing, an expert on the minority tribes of China. Hanging coffins generally appeared where there are rocks, and rocky places have special meanings for many tribes. Some view mountains as a stairway to heaven. If the bow believed that the spirits of the dead ancestors lived in heaven, then maybe the hanging coffins were a bridge between this world and the next, a stepping stone between the living and the dead.
the bow wrote nothing down about why or how they hung their coffins. But the ruling Han people kept diligent records of the entire Ming dynasty. Hidden in this chronicle of China are a few clues about the bow people and their coffins. Professor Lin Xiang has been studying the hanging coffins mystery for over 30 years. He believes it came about partly for practical reasons and partly through spiritual belief. The Bo people believe that after death, the human soul will rise up to heaven. To make this journey easier, you needed to bury your dead high up on a cliff so the soul would be closer to heaven. The other reason is more practical. They wanted to protect their coffins from being defiled by enemies or wild animals, so they put them out of reach. I think these two factors of practical need and spiritual belief came together, and that's how the custom of hanging coffins began. Most of our information about the bow comes from where they died, but there are a few locations, high in the mountains, where we can discover something about how they lived. One name given to the bow people is Dou Tian, which means fight the sky. They not only defied gravity with their hanging coffins, but they would fly in the face of any adversity. They thrive in terms of taking nature as a challenge to an extent that there is a story that circulates that they would make themselves wear very thin clothes in the winter, and whereas in the summer, they would wear very heavy overcoats just to have that challenge. What remained for me and as well as others to see is within the former territory of the Bo people, we find these remnants of their past. This is one of the Bo people's most legendary mountain strongholds, Ling Xiao, the castle in the sky. The Bo people lived in a state of constant warfare. They were always being attacked by the army of the Ming dynasty. So they would find a suitable mountain with good natural defences and then fortify it with walls and gates so that they could defend and protect themselves. Mountaintop forts like this were a unique part of Bo culture. The castle in the sky is like a lost world. It lies largely untouched, hidden and unexplored. He Zeyu is one of the first academics to set foot here. There are still plenty of relics here. One is the fortress gate. Also, you can clearly see the stoves the Vo people used 
at that time to cook food on. Those are unmistakable. And also underground tunnels with holes for observation, so they could see who was coming. At the top of the winding path, past the fortifications, there is a plateau where the bow people retreated to in times of trouble, safely nestled in the clouds. The one man who lives here now built his house with stones from the tumble-down bow buildings. His water comes from their well. This is the greatest collection of unexplored evidence about the life of the Bo people. I'll say there's still a lot of things waiting for us to discover. According to the locals here, every year on June 19th, the descendants of the Bo people come here to light incense and pay respects to their ancestors. So June 19th might very well be the day when the Bo people in Ling Xiao Fort were defeated. The defeat at Ling Xiao was a bitter blow to the Bo people, but they still survived. A hundred miles away, another mountain top saw the last bloody stand of the bow. The biggest battle took place here in Jiusi Mountain behind me. In the late 16th century, 40,000 bow people were slaughtered in a gruesome massacre by the Han. The troops of the Ming Dynasty were tightly encircled around the mountain and cut off the supply of water and food. The Ming soldiers laid siege for ten days, biding their time, waiting for the day of a big bow festival. The bow was singing, dancing and drinking a lot. In the end, after a great celebration, they were all drunk. The Ming troops took the chance and, using the mountain paths, attacked the mountain from all sides. This was the most brutal and intense fight. After this battle, the Bo people were almost wiped out. The Bo have achieved a magical, mythological status in China. Many who live under the shadow of the coffins, especially the older villagers, have legends to tell. There are many tales of the bow people flying. It's not surprising when you see where they lived and how they bury their dead. But history and legend are both subject to bias. Perhaps the truth of the bow will only emerge through archaeological exploration of their hanging coffins. At last, the scaffolding is ready. Ji Xueping and Liu Xu are ready to climb up to the last remaining coffin at Longma. It's a 
300-foot climb, but at the top of a rickety bamboo scaffold, archaeologist Liu Xu finally gets a chance to get close to a bow coffin. Foreign on close examination, we found the coffin here to be unique because it is made from a single block of wood. Personally, I believe that these coffins, with this kind of curved lid and a rough manufacturing style, are possibly from a very early era. The only way to accurately determine the age of the coffin is by carbon dating. But Liu Xu believes that this coffin could come from at least the Tang Dynasty. It could be over a thousand years old. This would make it the oldest coffin in southwest China. All they need to find now to make this a complete haul is a bow skeleton. And there is one cave left to explore. This is a natural cave, unlike the ones we found in Chang'an and Doushaguan. From talking to the locals, it seems that no one has ever climbed up here before. Success at last. The coffin from this cave has rotted or fallen away, but a valuable scattering of ancient human bones remain on the floor of the cave. Hey, it looks like a rib. Oh, no, this is a long old one. It has been broken. You can see it. Encouraged by his discovery. Ji Xueping decides to head deeper into the cave. It's like scar. Oh, we're almost company. The skeleton we found had its skull relatively intact. I consider this to be a highly important sample for our research. The skull is especially important because it will give us lots of information about the ethnic origin of the body. Okay, there's some bad. There's the rest of the skull here. The jaw. Yeah. The jaw. You send the jaw? Yeah. Oh! Wow! Oh! Oh! Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Oh! The jaw is here. Wow, careful. Wow, fantastic. <laughs> because of the absence of burial articles, it's hard to identify the age of the skeleton. To do so, we have to carry out a carbon dating test. But we can tell it is of medium height, likely to be a male. The rest is hard to tell. It needs facial reconstruction expertise. And I think if we want to identify the ethnic origin of the corpse, our primary means will be to use DNA analysis. This precious 1,000-year-old skull could be the clue that finally reveals the mysterious identity of the Bowl people.
Many scholars believe there must have been some survivors of the Bow Massacre at Jiusi Mountain. During the exploration at Longma, there were many rumors of Bow descendants living nearby. In particular, members of a family called He, who live in denial of any connection to the hanging coffins. It is inconceivable that all the Bo people were killed in one go. Even now, there is a folk rhyme in Gong County. Yo family is from the Li tribe, Ban family is from the Miao tribe, He family is from the Hanging on Cliff tribe. This is a legend that tells us that the people with the name of He are the descendants of Bo people. A few hours from Long Ma, hidden in the mountain mist, we track down these people. Their family name is He. After much conversation, they agree to talk to us about the possible connection with the bow. Could the rumors be true? Could this be the face of the bow? Be 你们家里的最自己的祖先还是自己卖过来的 你们现在,你们现在,呃,就是,呃,家里有人死了以后,怎么样的把它葬,葬的,葬在土里面还是怎么样的?还不是给大汉吹油嘛,还不是这些一样的,就给你当地,当地救地,你就要这么做,我们就
and prove the identity of the bow once and for all. The skull found in the cave in Longma has been brought here to Kunming, the capital of Yunnan. It will be analyzed using the very latest DNA techniques and to discover if there are any living bow descendants. I think it is reasonable to suspect that there will be some surviving people that has integrated or assimilated into the local areas. Uh, we have even heard of uh, some kind of uh, 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 ancestor worship uh, ceremony that is done uh, after midnight and only the male member are allowed to go. So I definitely think that modern science has something to contribute. Su Bing is a specialist in the analysis of ancient DNA. This is kind of joint effort between geneticists and uh, archaeologists. So this kind of project can provide a lot of information about the uh, cultural history of the Asian populations. We sampled the, the bones from the field, and then we get the bones to the lab, and then we need to clean the bones because there are contaminations from the environment and contaminations from people who are handling the samples. These are the same techniques used to identify the victims of massacres found in mass graves where there is no other means of identification. But with ancient bones, it's much harder to extract the DNA. Getting ancient DNA is not an easy job. First of all, you, you need to find the, the site. And uh, also, whether you can get DNA depends on how well the DNA is preserved. Su Bing has spent the last few years gathering DNA samples from different ethnic groups all over China and Asia. He has built up a massive database showing the genetic makeup of hundreds of different tribal minorities. There is a lot of discussions as where these people come from and uh, who are their ancestors. So by doing genetic analysis, we'll be able to compare the genetic structure between the Asian population and the current populations. It's a slow process. This is the first skull to be tested. It could take months or years to extract enough DNA to determine if there are any living descendants of the bowed people. For a truly conclusive result, Su Bing will need the DNA from 20 different bow skulls. Early indications from the DNA analysis suggest that at least one of the surviving tribes has links to the bow. But that's not all our skull from Long Ma can tell us. By using modern forensic science, we can build a sneak preview of the ancient bow. By building up layers of muscle, tissue, and skin on a model of the skull, facial reconstruction technicians have created this bow head. This is the long-lost face of the middle-aged man who spent the last thousand years resting in the cave at Long Ma. This is the face of the bow. This scientific and archaeological journey has unlocked many secrets of the mysterious Bo people. But there is still much to learn. At Suma Wan alone, there are over 90 coffins that no one has studied. This is heavily stacked up. If some of those beams down below is not secured well, it can just have a whole avalanche. As they are 11 of them right up here, one above each other.
I think the only way to really get close to them and conduct any research and conservation will be to build an entire scaffolding, like a whole facade. The Bow people left an astonishing legacy, clear for all to see. They may have disappeared, but the symbols of their culture still cling defiantly to the cliffs of southwest China, reaching up closer to heaven. Ever since I start studying these coffins, I figure in my mind that I may have one new option for where I want to be after I die. Besides being cremated or buried, I could be hanged too. Perhaps, who knows, one of these days I may be among them, being part of the mystery.